this episode, I'm brought to tears. I'm not crying because I'm upset, it's just the cold, honestly. I like driving in my truck. Do, 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 do. So it's, it's a classic spot to place a human being. And this is begging for it. So we're- Hey Gavin, hiya, um, you got any snacks? No, I don't have any snacks. And see if it's got a glowing rim. Mounds, mound is a good word. Yeah. Did you get a good shot of me? Of you, yeah, it was brilliant, yeah. It's not gonna be free though. <laughs> No, I'm only joking. And this down here is a brake pedal. Try using that once in a while. Well, it's 7 a.m. And I've actually had eight hours of sleep. But I still have a face like a marathon runner's nipple. And I'm quite upset because I forgot to set my alarm. So I just looked out of the window at the back of the camper and the sky has lit up. So, of course, I've missed the best of the light. And we're still 20 minutes from this horseshoe What's it called? Horseshoe? Canyon, I think. Horseshoe Canyon Overlook. So, I'm a bit upset, but we'll go anyway. And by the time we get there, the sun might just be high enough so that it's creeping into the canyon and causing some nice light and maybe some nice colours. So, we'll set off in a minute. Just got to do a quick flush and wipe. <laughs> and then we'll go. I'll tell you what, nothing beats camper poos. Nothing. Oh, no, eh? Hey? That's right, eh? Hey? And so we hit the road and drove directly to the canyon. And that is when it hit me. You know when you're young and you're driving along the highway and there's some old fart in a caravan driving real slow and you just get really annoyed and impatient and pass them. You're that old fart. I'm now that old fart. <laughs> I, I used to be the young impatient guy, but now I'm just tootling along in my old truck. I like driving in my truck. Cause I do not give a f I go slow but I don't care Because I'm losing my hair I made that up It's wonderful well, Actually it's madness It's a madness song that I just murdered And still a bit spaced out from that NyQuil that I downed last night I am driving slightly under the speed limit I just don't have it in me to get my foot down on that pedal so I'm annoying everybody. Sorry, everybody. I like driving in my truck. <laughs> now, whenever driving in Alberta, it always pays to remember that most Albertans don't know anything about indicators or what we call here signals. So if you're an Albertan and you're watching, let me just show you how to do it. So you just, there's this stalk on the left of your steering wheel. And if you want to turn right, which I'm going to do right now, just push it up and you hear that ticking noise. And now I'm telling everybody else on the road that I'm gonna turn into the left lane. So the, the right lane, sorry. And look at that. And then once you've got into the lane, you just get that same stalk and you push it down to switch it off. It's brilliant, it's a fantastic invention. You're welcome. No, <laughs> I'm only joking. And this down here is a brake pedal. Try using that once in a while. Despite my newly geriatric driving style, we arrived at the canyon with plenty of time to spare. So this is Horseshoe Canyon, not Horseshoe Bend in Arizona, it's Horseshoe Canyon in Alberta. And uh, I have been here once before, but I didn't even stop to take a shot because it was just gray sky, kind of a little bit like today. But there's the, uh, well, that's what was left of the sunrise. The sun is probably stuck in the middle of that dark cloud there. But once it gets a little bit higher, there might be a gap and it'll pop through, hopefully, and then blast its way into the canyon. And then you'll start to see some of these, I'm going to call them hillocks because I don't know what else to call them. But these hillocks and these edges to the canyon should hopefully catch a bit of light and then you'll see them burst to life. But I reckon that's probably a half an hour to an hour away. What do you reckon, love? Probably right after breakfast. And it, it's probably time for breakfast. So we'll go back in, maybe have coffee number two, Ooh. and uh, I'll check. What's right here today? Coffee number two. <laughs> I suspect that Amanda had already indulged in coffee number two without telling me. In fact, it was hard to keep up with her sprightly pace. I needed a hearty breakfast. Okay, one of these is the lion's mane fungus. And the other one is a antiviral. Oh, she's tucking right in there. How do you like it? Mm -hmm. Good. 
Yeah. Do you like that coffee yogurt? It's like we've got this coffee flavoured no, yogurt. Second, second coffee. Are you making it this time? Oh, all right. Deal. Right, I'll tuck into this extremely bland, I mean, a delicious breakfast. Well, I think the sun just popped up through the clouds. Let's have a look. Oh yeah, here we are. It's well and truly up now, so I think I'll uh, finish this coffee rapidly and then get out there, see if I can get a shot of the uh, glowing rim. So even though the sun's up, it's bloody cold out here in Drumheller. I remember the first time I came out here, it was something like minus 15 or minus 20 Celsius, but obviously that was in the winter. But now here in September, I don't know when you're gonna be watching this video, it might be <laughs> December, but right now it's September, it's just that change of the season. And it is bloody cold, I'll tell you that. Anyway, let's have a quick look into the canyon and see if it's got a glowing rim. And uh, if not, then I'll probably move to a different viewing platform. But I'll, I'll give you a quick glimpse and show you what I'm thinking about. Oh, if anyone knows why they do this, let me show you this. I'm guessing why they put that plastic around the trunk of the tree is just to protect it when the snow falls, maybe. I don't know, so it doesn't freeze up or soak. But if you know what it's uh, all about, post a comment, let me know. Man, that went cold pretty quick out here in this freezing weather. So my thinking is, and now the sun's gone, but it'll pop out again. My thinking is, if you look at these hillocks down in the canyon, what I think I want is side light, so that you've got light that kind of licks the edges of each one of these hillocks, making them stand out. I'm thinking that I don't want face light, so if I move in the direction of the sun and I'm looking completely west, then you won't have, let's say, half of the hillock in shade and half of it lit. You'll have the whole thing lit, which won't be as pleasing, I don't think, anyway. And if I went to that side of the canyon, looking towards the sun, well, then everything will be backlit. And I don't know whether or not that'll work either, but I feel, you know, from experience, that probably side light would be the best. Now I've got a much clearer view of the canyon with a nicer angle. Let me show you this. And as an added bonus, you've got all these beautiful fall colours in this shrubbery here. I never imagined that you'd have fall colours out in this desert near Drumhella. It's quite beautiful. And now that the sun has popped up a little bit, it's just catching a nice bit of side light but it is diffused by a cloud, so I don't know if I'm gonna get the kind of light that I want, but I better get my camera out quick and be ready just in case I do. But tell you what, I'm glad I didn't get up at stupid o'clock because what was the point? You need that light, you need the sun to be quite high to create some nice contrast and some color. Anyway, I'll get my shot set up and uh, see what I can find. Okay, well, the light is so bright that I don't know if you can actually see what I'm filming here, but this is my composition let me just brighten it up ever so slightly as usual with this camera i've gone for a super wide panorama i, I just can't resist it i don't know what it is about this aspect ratio but it just it makes images look epic so the foreground here it, i'm not crying because i'm upset it's just the cold honestly uh, my tax return was quite bad but it, you know it's just the cold so in the foreground i've got this lovely yellow shrubbery for a nice splash of color I'll just make it a little bit darker and then you straight into the canyon but the reason why I've composed it in this tight narrow panorama is because I didn't want if I just turn this round the rim of the canyon that you can see there there's nothing of interest happening in the sky and also I don't want to see these these buildings on the top of the canyon so just by angling it down to about there so that you cut that out which is hopefully what you could see here in the composition it just means that your frame is filled with canyon canyon and color now what you're looking at now is very flat dull light because the sun has just disappeared behind that cloud but a few minutes ago it was a little bit lower and it was blasting into the canyon and i got a nice pop of color and you probably can't see it now but amanda is just stood atop that ridge there that i keep calling them hillocks because i don't know what else to call them mounds mound is a good word but yeah she stood right on top of that and uh, if this shot turns out to be any good 
Here's a shot. Well, it's certainly not a portfolio piece. I knew I could do better. So I decided to go down into the canyon to see how things looked while beautifully backlit. Okay, so now I've hiked down just a little bit into the canyon. And I don't usually do these environmental portraits, but the way that the light's hitting Amanda as she stands atop that little hillock there, which is probably the most picturesque of all of them because it's really pale and has these beautiful crenellations and patterns all around it. So it's, it's a classic spot to place a human being. So I've, I've placed her just off center in my frame. Now, I'd love to show you on the back of the camera, but the sun is so bright, I'm, I'm shooting directly into the sun. It's pointless, you won't be able to see it. So trust me when I tell you that I don't usually do these environmental portraits unless I'm at a place that is just begging for it. And this is begging for it. So if this turns out any good, here's the shot. Now you might think that Amanda did a great job of standing still for this shot. And she did, until she realised that I was taking a picture of her. And then the coffee kicked in again. Yeah, this is, uh, this is what I have to deal with. Yeah. But I wouldn't change it. I wouldn't change it for anything. So this is your, uh, this is your little, little hillock. It's pretty awesome, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Did you get a good shot of me? Of you, yeah, it was brilliant, yeah. Can I get a copy? Well, yeah, I mean, it's not going to be free, though. <laughs> you know? I'll do you a deal. Yeah, like what? This could go quite badly wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I can send you a copy and you can share it with your mother or something, but, you know, it's going to cost you. Copyright Gavin Hardcastle? Exactly. One hundred million dollars. <laughs> Sold. <laughs> well, can I at least see it if I can't buy it? Yeah, have a look. It's on, on the back of the camera there. Oh, my mound is glowing, hey? <laughs> Wait, hang on. Is that Gavin? So, uh... Hey, Gavin! Hiya, um, you got any snacks? No, I don't have any snacks. Ah, oh, come on, you tight ass! Yes, I've got some nuts. God, I'm, I'm sick of eating this grass. It, they put Roundup in it again. Well, we're not allowed to give them to you. It's feeding the wildlife is frowned on. I can't give you any snacks. Don't you think I'm cute? <sighs> Go on. I'm sorry I can't. Well then, your channel's rubbish. Every time. And I'm gonna unsubscribe. Every time. I'm just one. Run away. No, I get into trouble. Yeah, wanker. <laughs> what are you looking at? 